Welcome back. Uh, time to uh, go through the pages of the National Daily's interesting headlines on the front page. So look at them. We have our public affairs analyst, uh, Ezekiel Nyai, took architect Ezekiel Nyai, took join us this morning. Uh, good morning to you, architect, architect Nyai, took. Thanks for your time. Good morning. Always a pleasure to be with you. Good yes, there's, there's a title I, I had for you, but I'll just keep it um, offline for now. Um, but we'll, we'll discuss that later. <laughs> All right. Uh, please stand by while we go through um, the headlines this morning. Uh, the punch, uh, we start with the punch newspaper with these uh, following headlines. Uh, the big one there, APC, Exco, governors divided over Buhari's succession plan, screening report ready today. And uh, we are monitoring the, um, the, the governor's meeting. All we kept hearing was deadlock, deadlock, deadlock. Uh, uh, we told they're going to reconvene later. Uh, looking forward to that to see what will happen. Uh, the, the, the kickers to that story or that headline, picking a successor risky will rubbish president's legacies, Northwest Vice Chairman of the APC. President won't com impose candidates, says Nwajuba or Shebaja Group backs consensus. Akonde or Shoba to meet Southwest governors, Tidubu Group warns against wrong candidacy. Uh, quite intriguing there. Nigeria, Spain, sign nine MOUs on criminal martyrs, others. A picture of the president uh, right there in Spain alongside uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Spanish officials. Um, at the top of that front page, insecurity. Local foreign companies withdraw 69% of investment projects. Uh, details on page 19. INEC laments low turnout, uh, says 20 million PVCs unclaimed. How about that? Prelate's abduction, army denies complicity, experts demand probe, dislodged terrorists from northeast recruiting massively in Kaduna theater commander. Uh, right, uh, more from the paper, renewable energy investment potential in Nigeria, over $104 billion, according to the UK. Lagos ports collapsing, West African cargo diversion imminent. Wow, details on page 25. Federal government deploys response, response teams as Lassa fever kills 153. Customs sees 828 bags of foreign rice, others in Benin, Lagos. And uh, hijab crisis, police beef up security around Kwara school. There we go again. Couple, three children die in Ondo crash, five killed in Benwe market. Okada riders desert Lagos roads. Police impound 140 motorcycles, arrest passengers. Um, and we have oil marketers running at loss. Multiple government oversight, Forex affecting business, MD 11 PLC saying that one uh, there. Those are headlines coming in on the Punch newspaper. To the nation this morning, the big headline. 2023 president, it's South's turn after Buhari says Ayade, uh, that's in the nation newspaper, Ayade governor of Cross River State, who himself is an aspirant, he picked uh, the 100 million naira form uh, for president in the APC. 2023 president, it's South's turn after Buhari says Ayade. Why consensus presidential candidate is not in ruling party's interest? By National Working Committee member. And there is a, a quote there saying, Zoning was adopted to ensure an egalitarian and equitable power sharing. I'm sure it's uh, that NWC member saying that. Still with the nation, PDP delegate shares 7 million naira with community, pays, indigent, or pays for indigent pupils. PDP delegate shares 7 million naira with community a place for indigent pupils. Ministry director forfeits Vasti Hotel factory. Uh, court rules on EFCC suit. Nigeria, Spain seek global action against food crisis. Qua reopened school shot last year over hijab crisis. And final one from the paper, native doctor health over Anambra lawmakers beheading. Uh, never saw that coming. Let's go over to the leadership newspaper with the following headlines. 
And the bold story there has the kicker, APC front runners. And the headline, Tirbu Oshibajo, Lawan, Amechi, Bello, four others may be shortlisted. APC stakeholders kick against cons consensus option as Buhari tips Oshibajo as party's flag bearer. And that is in quote, quotation marks, all right? So we should uh, uh, know that. Southeast leaders back Lawan for presidential ticket. All right. Uh, sometimes you see the headlines from these papers. You wonder if they are true. Southeast leaders back Lawan for presidential ticket. <laughs> More from the paper. Inflation. FG to convene Food Security Council meeting. Uh, FEC OKs and NPC echo as is Nigeria Morocco gas pipeline a pipeline deal. And FIRS begins recovery of unremitted unremitted uh, tax deductions by state local governments. Another 166 Nigerians stranded uh, uh, stranded Nigerians returned from Libya. Native doctor 17 napped over beheading of Anamra lawmaker in 2023. Obasanjo mobilizes South against the Tiku wants power shift. And finally, let's look at the headlines on the front page of the Daily Independent. My victory is for Nigerians suffering APC misrule. Atiku is the big story on the front page of the Independent. My victory is for Nigerians suffering APC misrule. Atiku. PDP will take over from colorless. Clueless government, are you vows? Fec OKs, 14 billion naira for Nigeria, Morocco, gas pipeline, others. Approves 8.315 billion naira for police vehicles, raincoats, medical supplies. Africa money, Ogade Chopam, Fuka, Fuka. FIRS threatened states, local governments over unremitted tax deductions. Fan moves to install airfield lighting at Lagos domestic runway. Uh, we had uh, we saw a headline yesterday indicating that the pilots uh, had um, complained about the failing lighting on the international runway. But this is talking about the domestic runway. Lagos Okadaban commuters recount experiences as enforcement begins. APC presidential primary, Lawan Ice consensus candidacy. And FG ready to address rising cost of food minister. And uh, finally from that paper, Buhari picking successor may rubbish image APC party shifting wants. Let's now uh, bring in Ezekiel and I took um, uh, Ms. Taituk, let's start with uh, uh, the story that is in all the papers, the succession plan of Mr. President, uh, the Northwest Vice Chairman of the party is saying that picking a successor will rubbish the legacies of uh, President Muhammad Buhari. Um, what are your thoughts on, on what he is saying? I like to, to take on issues uh, from what I call first principles. And that is that every Nigerian, every group, every association, they have the fundamental right of either expression or association. They can say what they want, they can associate with whoever they want. So uh, my analysis of the thought of another person is to the extent where I think that such a thought has um, a, a, a relevant um, you know, uh, um, um, impact on me. But for me, the bigger picture is to what extent do we analyze the thoughts of others relative to the capital issue on the table, which is that we have a country that has been run aground and that we owe this country the duty and responsibility of recruiting a competent CEO to lead us from where we are having achieved that ignoble you know, tag of being the poverty capital of the world, looking at the sufferings of the people, looking at how everything is going south. This morning, I read an analysis on our debt profile and the fact that maybe sometime in 2026, we may be using 100% of our resources to service debt. 
These are the issues that should dominate the headlines and the analysis should be who is the most competent. The, any group of people are at liberty to play politics that will favor them. But as nationalists, at this point in time, when parties are choosing their standard bearers, we owe it to this nation to put pressure on the parties to look for the most, uh, most competent, most qualified, most capable. We should have put up all the profiling indices so that we start to benchmark all of them. And parties will now do the internal, you know, um, uh, body search, you know, soul searching to see who fits the image that has been created by the nation. If not so, we are going to wake up in the next few days and it's, the windows are fast closing. The APC window is closed. The PDP, sorry, the PDP window is closed. The APC window is what we're all deliberating right now. And yet another party paraded 12 Nigerians. When they gave their resume, it was impeccable. If pr probably one of the world-class, you know, um, you know, re recruitment agencies was asked to look at the peculiar situation of Nigeria and recruit a competent CEO out of 10 to be shortlisted, a minimum of three will be in what ADC, African Democratic Congress, took two hours on national network and brought out 12 people to make a pitch to all Nigerians. That is something unprecedented. It has never happened. And yet it was, you no, know, like, it's something I'd expected the media to say, guys, the rest of you, let's see what you are doing. And then the media to have picked these people and magnified their profiles so as to put pressure on others. But I'm happy that certain Nigerians were bold enough to step out of the two so-called big parties. I'm talking about Alaji Kwankwaso to put up the NNPC and then my brother and friend Peter Obi to go into the Labour Party. We now have the likes of Chukamoye, somebody that the nation needs to go and check the profile. You know, somebody like Chue Dumebi Kachiku, our man, uh, uh, Professor Kings Limohalu, these are people on the platform of ADC. These are the sort of conversations I want to talk about and not to come and say, oh, you should go to the North. I like that. You should come to the South for the sake of equity. For the... Let me say this. While I think that the, the, the Southeast have been saying it from the beginning, they have stars. I find it so difficult why a man like Professor Kingsley Mohalu is not so highlighted, so celebrated, so pushed forward. Nigerians, you wanted a competent person. Tell me if this man is not competent. Tell me. Anywhere in the world, you can't look down on such a person. But the Southeasterners are not doing that. They say, oh, it's our turn. It's our turn. I mean, do they understand what politics is? Sometimes it beats me hollow. You know, we talk now, there's a definition. Should it be Southeast? Should it be Igbos? Because people in, 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 the, in the Niger Delta, like Asaba, you know, who are predominantly Igbo speaking and everything, we say, no, they are not Igbos. And I'm wondering, where are they? Who are they? Say, so, no, we don't want Igbo. We now want Southeast. This confusion needs to be, to be, to be, to be addressed so that the likes of, how do you wear Kachiku? Um, do maybe, and then you are not Igbo or you are not Southeast. It's, I think we need to really sit down and redefine our governance parameters. So whatever these people are saying, I'm happy for them. But for me, who can rescue Nigeria? That's my biggest headache today. President will be helping matters by um, picking a successor. He's asked for a list of names. You know, on the issue of um, the successor for Mr. President, I really want Nigerians to, to sit down and be very objective and realistic. 
has Mr. President done so well that he needs somebody that will continue how well he has done? The jury is out there. Has Mr. President finished his term and as a patriot, as a nationalist, as one who belongs to all and belongs to none, he set a level playing ground first in his party so that whosoever is preferred by his party picks the ticket. And he carries the same hand to come to Nigeria. And he warns his party, you guys, you better make sure you get the most competent because they are going to face other Nigerians and the ground is going to be level. So APC now knows that, guy, there's going to be a level playing ground. We better be sure of who we are going to pick because unlike before when we used to have a window of effectively one month, which is January to campaign, Today, we have a minimum of six months. And within these six months, narratives are going to be redefined. We are going to look at the profiles of the people involved. We are going to do the thorough analysis of their backgrounds, of their policies. We are going to subject them to such rigors. That is why I'm happy that a party like ADC is there, because if you look at the top three, top four, by my own analysis, of the candidates or the aspirants of ADC, any of them can hold out their own, strong, strong, and put up formidable defense and offense in pushing for why they should be made the next president of Nigeria. I also have, because this is an analysis that I'm supposed to be a general analyst and not a... Yeah, exactly. I was about to point that I out. I also have friends in, look at, in SDP, I think most likely my, my friend um, Wale Adewale is going to pick the ticket. Listen to that guy. He is cerebral. He is informed. He is experienced. You know, I had an interview with, uh, um, I think it was um, one of these papers, you know, I think it was The Guardian, long time ago, I think some, sometime in 2007, and they made a major blunder that has redefined a lot of things. When we, they were interviewing me, they quoted me as saying that we need someone with elephant experience. And that is not what I said. What I said was relevant experience. But it sounded like elephant. It's all relevant. But if you take the two, Nigerians keep talking about experience, experience, experience. He has been a commissioner. He has been a minister. He has been a this, a that. These are experience in failure. They are experience in bureaucracy. They are experience in politics and not governance. Today, Nigeria needs people that have experience in how to bring water out of the rock. They want people who have experience in getting something out of nothing. All right. All right. They want All right. people who have experience in baking and not in taking. Okay. These are takers. They are not bakers. So when it comes to relevant experience, these are the sort of people you are looking at. You put a guy, like a young boy, a young guy, not boy, like Chuku Kamoye, you see what is made from his industry. Oh, oh, all right. Architects. You cannot bet yeah. respect. Uh, architects. I, 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 I do. On the Nigerian stage yes, in his area yes. of, of core competence. All right. Uh, architects, I, I do agree with you. Experience. Yes. These yes. are the people that Nigeria needs. Yeah, architects, I do agree with you. You have to be general. Um, I do understand, you know, that you're speaking about those who you know, um, you know, easily, you know, who you have associated with. But um, of course, indeed, we have other parties, like you rightly said. I would also like to inform you that um, uh, the STP uh, elected uh, former Anambra senatorial, uh, central senator, uh, Ebenezer Ikeina, um, as a presidential candidate. He's a third republic uh, um, legislator. You, you know, there's, uh, there's been some crisis rocking the party. Um, I don't know which faction your uh, friend belongs to, but Ebenezer Ikeina, is the one who has been uh, 
uh, announced uh, as the party's presidential candidate, held a primary in Abuja on Tuesday. Uh, let's see how, how what happens. Because remember, even in 2019, Donald Duke had challenges um, when he won the primary of that party. But but quickly, let's go, uh, let's stick with the Punch newspaper and look at um, a very worrying headline. This is, it sits atop the front page of the Punch newspaper, um, saying that um, with the security situation in the country, uh, local and foreign companies uh, have withdrawn 69% of the investment projects. This is really worrying, wouldn't you say? Ex extremely so. And uh, unfortunately, I would say not unexpected. You see, we've laid so much emphasis on, 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 on politics and we forget the fundamentals of running a government, uh, fundamentals of foreign direct investment. And that one of the most fundamental of the fundamentals is peace and security. And we've allowed this to just keep dragging and dragging. And we think in terms of foreign investment, it's like we are playing the ostrich. And it is very sad and very, very disturbing. We need somebody that will be able to come and understand the import of peace, of unity, of stability in development, in foreign direct investment. So these people that are selling off is not because Nigeria is one of the most fertile markets. Nigeria is one of the most interesting places to, we don't only have the population, we have the people. When I say the people, Nigerians are extremely friendly, almost to a fault. We are, we are intelligent. We are, you know, all the dynamics you will need in a place for you to invest in, they are resident in Nigeria. What we just need is a man who understands governance, who understands the dynamics of fairness, of equity, who sits down and realizes that all fingers are not equal, but every finger is a finger, and they feed from the mainstream of the body. This finger is not as tall as this, but it's not complaining because it's being honored. This is slimmer, you know, and it's not even bothered because it's united and is accepted. Once we understand the, 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 the principles of the finger and the body and extrapolate it with nationhood, then we'll have every section being happy and accommodated, being, you know, helped to maximize their potentials. At that point, the unity that will be created brings about the inevitable, inevitable concomitant, which is peace. And that is the bedrock, the foundation for foreign direct investment. Right. So that companies are leaving should really give Mr. President, you know, cause for alarm. Choosing uh, a successor should not be his, his pre preoccupation at this time when he's exiting. He mm -hmm. wants to exit on a certain record that people will like, like Peter Obi did. When he left, he went to Central uh, to Supreme Court and swore an affidavit to the things he left behind. And those things have defined him. Years after, they are coming to start to speak for him. So I think that Mr. President should look at that headline again and really ask himself, is this what I really want to be remembered for? That it was at the twilight of my exit that companies started running out of Nigeria. Hmm. All right, Mr. President is currently in Spain, uh, in the Spanish capital Madrid, and uh, he's agreed to host a global tourism event, uh, which would uh, mean that uh, you know tourism uh, organizations and uh, professionals around the world will converge in Nigeria. Um, uh, probably this is one of the ways to restore the confidence of the investing community in the country. But um, we stick with the politics of the day. We stick with the Punch newspaper. Um, we've been hearing, get your PVC, get your PVC, go and get registered. And uh, the records show that we've had an increasing percentage of uh, voter apathy and low voter th turnout in uh, the recent election. So the highest number of re registered voters ever in the history of the country was recorded in 2019. And we had the lowest uh, percentage of, 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 of turnout of voters registered voters in, in 2019. Um, you know, it's been increasing over the years, uh, higher and higher, and more people choosing to stay at home. Um, to, today, on the front page of the, the Punch newspaper, the INEC chairman is lamenting, is saying that um, 20 million PVCs are unclaimed. Uh, are we really ready uh, for the elections as a people when we hear such uh, uh, statistics? 
You see, we are so, you know, I said this before and I say it again. If you have a car and you are a driver, your windscreen is from end to end the sides and top to bottom the front, you know? End to end, your windscreen is, it covers the whole of the car. You don't see any other thing except the windscreen. And yet there is a second, you know, object. That object is called rear view mirror. It's just a little bit, a little bit, you know, on top there. Just tiny, a little fraction, less than 5% of the size of the windscreen. But we choose to run our lives with the rear view mirror, looking at the back, back, back. There is a document on ground called the New Electoral Act. That is what will define 2023. I want INEC chairman not to lose sleep. Nigerians it's are going to rush those PVCs. They will collect all. And those who have not registered are going to regret they did not register. Do you know why? Because for the first time, that particular, you know, this new electoral act has given a window of campaign of over six months. Some of us are in the race. And what we are going to do is take on issues. Number two, we're going to tell you why one you have a choice before it used to be between six and have a dozen just two parties and that's it now you have a choice you have several parties secondly you have the time we in the new parties are going to comb the nooks and crannies of nigeria and we're going to wake up the youths we're going to activate a base that has been hither to dormant those people who have been saying, I don't need to waste my time, they will write their results, they will do whatever they want to do. Why am I going to go out and endorse what doesn't make sense to me? They had a point. But now they are going to see, wow, Nyaitong is on the race. Good. Did you hear what he said? How about the other person? There's going to be analysis for the next six months. And before elections come, we are going to have the highest turnout that has ever been because there are going to be credible candidates that the people like. And there's going to be time for people to go around and converse for vote and enlighten the people. We don't leave it to the parties again. We are seizing the initiative. We are going to activate the, 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 the corporate Nigeria, tell them the prognosis of having a leader that makes sense so that their businesses don't go out and why they should put their money where their mouth is. They are going to come on board. We're going to activate the young people that hitherto you've been treated as people who are toothless bulldogs that you only sit on the social media and rant. Come out and show them now that you have the power and they are going to come out. We're going to go to the faith-based organizations and say that the division between them is caused by politicians. Bring people who are unifiers and they are going to bring a level playing ground for all of you to practice your religion while the state focus on the development of the people. We're going to go into all these things and things are going to be good. So I've learned to use the windscreen. Yes, from time to time, you look at because the Bible talks about keeping abreast of the facts. You know, one of my, my best scriptures in the Bible, a business, if you read it, it's like, a, 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 you know, something from Harvard Business Textbooks. It says, any enterprise is built on wise planning. It is sustained through common sense and profits wonderfully by keeping abreast of the fact. That's Proverbs 24, 3 and 4. I love it. So we need the rear mirror to keep abreast of the fact that there's going to be wise planning, there's going to be common sense. 2023 is going to be the most exciting year. You can keep this step and play back after that election. And then you call me a prophet and that my father called me Ezekiel, not for nothing. <laughs> Thank you very much. You didn't tell us what um, version of the Bible it is, whether it's New Living Translation or, uh, or Amplified Version, because I would like to check it up. But indeed... It's it, a New Living Translation. All right. You know, the old version, King James says, by wisdom is a house built, by understanding right. is filled with this. But when you read the, the Living Translation, it says, any enterprise, Proverbs 24, 3 and 4, any enterprise is built on wise planning. All right. It is sustained through common sense and profits wonderfully by keeping abreast of the fact. Mm. That is what I'm employing in my politics. Okay. And guy, it's working. Interesting. We are on the same wavelength if it's uh, the NLT. Um, <laughs> let's, now we've entered religion, let's stay there. Um, because the punch is, um, 
informing us, uh, giving us the latest on, and I know you, you'll be um, aware of the Office of the Prelate of Methodist Church in Nigeria uh, with your state, Akwaibom State, God's own state, uh, having produced um, one of the most successful and legendary uh, prelates in the history of the Methodist Church in Nigeria, uh, His Eminence Doc Dr. Sunday Imban. Um, the office of the prelate is revered. I'm sure you're aware of that already. And uh, it was quite a shock to many to hear that uh, the current prelate of Methodist Church in Nigeria, uh, His Eminence Dr. Samuel Kalu Uche, uh, had been kidnapped and was uh, in kidnapper's den for 24 hours. Now, he was released. Um, he came out after the Abia state governor had released a statement saying that um, he, you know, he was released due to the grace of God, the fervent prayers of the Christian community, and uh, uh, well-coordinated response of security agencies in Abia state. Uh, the man came out to say, hey, uh, nobody coordinated nothing. I paid 100 million naira uh, to the ransom that was raised by the church, and uh, that's how we secured our release. There was no involvement of the military or the police, nothing. Um, but he made some very, very um, serious allegations uh, of uh, probably of, of connivance or, or involvement of uh, soldiers in the whole industry of kidnapping in that part of the country. The Nigerian Army has released a statement through its uh, a public relations officer denying complicity and um, also saying they will be reaching out to his eminence uh, to interface with him. A lot of reactions, um, mostly condemnation of the military's response and statement by uh, some Nigerians. And experts are also demand, uh, demanding a probe of the entire incident. What, what are your thoughts on this? The headline from the punch is prelate's abduction, army denies complicity, experts demand probe. Two things. The first is that my parents, both parents, are Methodists. So you can see that it hit me, um, or were Methodists, it hit me personally. And like you said, one of the most successful, most revered, you know, prelates of the Methodist Church who had become the leader of the world body is from Akwaibo. He happens to be my father. Uh, I would call him that, prelate Mbang. So for me, it was very personal. Secondly, you know, a lot of times I sit down and I listen to people on television and it takes my wife to tell me, close your mouth. You know, it... I honestly can't understand how these people think that Nigerians are dumb, that Nigerians are stupid, that Nigerians don't have an understanding of what is going on. And I want to salute the courage of the prelate who has lived up to that bidding of being a man of God who couldn't care less whose ox is God, but must speak the truth, truth to power. You want to take the credit for what you did not do, the guy gets in there, you do nothing, next to nothing. The man is released, oh, it was released through prayers and coordinated responses. I mean, what's that? And you're expecting the man to be so calm, to keep quiet. Do you know what a hundred million is? Do you know what it's causing? I know the Methodist church. We're not this big money church, so to speak. Do you know what it means for people to rally around and raise such a man because they say, a prelate cannot be put in there for one more day. They know what has happened to the people that they, that they, they, they train, they train kidnapped people. They know how the, the main man came out. They know how he came out. He paid 100 million, he came out. The others are still there. This well-coordinated response, we are still waiting for it. Hmm. My daughter, Lia Sharibu, is still in captivity. She's still going through hell. And all the others, where is this well-coordinated prayers, this, this, this? I believe in prayers. I don't believe in that. Because if not for prayers, something could have happened before the man was even released. There are so many people that you go somewhere along the line and there's misunderstanding. Boom. You know, or this will take those things that turn their head. And before they could say Jack, they've gone down one or two. God must have kept that man for the time of rescue. So I think that we should please treat Nigerians with a certain level of, of respect for their intellect. And I don't blame them. Sometimes we Nigerians have become maybe so too docile that we see a man appear on television and he's wearing a dark colored dress that I'm wearing. And he says, this is white. And we're looking and keeping quiet. These are the sort of things that I think that Nigerians should get up. The, the, the organized private sector, the faith-based organizations, 
Let's stop running commentaries and start setting agenda. Those are two different things. We've run enough commentaries. 2023 is coming. Go behind that candidate that you know makes sense. Give him or give her a call. I said, I want to support you. I want to stand with you. I want to be your voice. Don't wait and see. I'm running for the governorship of my state. And I'm looking for people to say, you make sense and I want to support you. Not only me. There are very many good people coming in. If I fail, it will be such a major discouragement to people who say, don't get involved in politics, it's dirty. Can't you see what happened to Nyaito? But my success will ginger the rest of the people who say, no, let's get involved. Look at how they rallied round behind Nyaito. Let's get it. The same would be, if you have a bottle of Coke, a bottle of, uh, well, I don't want fizzy drink, that is dark, and, you know, and the dark part is just, I'll, I'll bring this. The dark part is just a little part of it. You know, it's black here. And you keep pouring with more water, water, water. You know, as it goes up, it gets lighter, 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 because more clean water is entered. A time comes when you may not even know that there was a dark substance there. The more clean people that come into politics, the more they're able to change the narratives. Please don't, if you cannot get in there, get somebody to, su to support today. There's somebody that you know, that you believe in. Whether it's in a small party is irrelevant. Be the structure that that person needs. And 2023 will be a pleasant surprise for Nigeria where we turn the bend and start to move in the right direction. This is my prayer, my hope, and my expectation. All right. Uh, architect Eto, Eto, what are the dangers? And should we not just be worried about the increasing insecurity in the country and the cases of attacks and, and kidnappings, abductions, uh, killings, but also um, the enrichment of, of these organized criminals? Um, um, what are the dangers of hundreds oh. of millions of narrows finding their way into the hands of organized criminals? It, 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 it's one question that um, we really, really need to understand. It, it become an enterprise that it will need a combination of the grace of God and a committed government. You sit down, you pick one man, and you make 100 million. You pick another man, just one person, you make 10 million. How much, how many cows will you sell to make 100 million naira profit? This has become such a lucrative enterprise. But look at the flip side of it. It's something, such a terrible evil wind that will cripple the nation and empower the, 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 the terrorists. So the essence of government, chapter, four, chapter 2, section 14, subsection 2b, says that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. Primary purpose of government shall security, welfare, security, welfare of the people. So this enterprise is, is, a, is such a terrible cancer, but it's such a lucrative cancer that these people, they can recruit, they can even become, you know, this, this, um, the, there's, uh, there's this, this, this person that, that I can't remember, but I'm just saying, but I can't pick out the name, that, that throws things to people, you know, and it, it steals and distributes, you know? Uh, they, Robin, they Robin Hood? Start, yeah. They are starting to buy the goodwill of the people in their localities, and it's terrible. They are being proactive. They are getting the people behind them, and we are doing catch-up, and we are government. No. The people must not see them as their saving grace. The people must see them as their enemies. One of the things that Hitler did, which was indoctrination, was so good that a child in primary school will tell you that the Jews are a problem. They were so indoctrinated that a child in primary school will tell you the Jews are a problem. The Jews are a problem. The Jews are a problem. Call it indoctrination. Call it right. anything. Right. We need to bring back MAMSA. We need to bring back National Orientation Agency as the most important ministry in Nigeria, more than finance, more than works, more than petroleum, to start that massive engagement with the people 
to the extent where we have our minds reorientated right. towards nationalism. All right. That's when we start to build Nigeria. Interesting that you've talked about, you know, the uh, the the terrorists, you know, being empowered with, with millions, hundreds of millions, possibly billions of of naira if they Billion. continue this this Billion. trend, and how they can use it to woo you know, people from different parts of the country to join them to their side. And uh, the punch has a headline that really, um, you know, highlights this. Uh, on the front page of the punch, it says, uh, dislodged terrorists from the Northeast recruiting massively in Kaduna Theater Commander. But if you go to the website, uh, just to look, get some more details, uh, which I've done, it says that um, it has a wider headline. Um, uh, dislodged terrorists from Northeast taking advantage of poverty to recruit massively uh, in Kaduna, according to the Army Theater Commander, um, Major General Christopher Musa, uh, for Northeast Operation Hadinkai, uh, gave an interview with, uh, with the Punch newspaper, taking advantage of poverty to recruit massively in Kaduna State. So this is what you were just talking about. You've been vindicated. Exactly. It is the truth. And that's because the government has failed to understand their primary purpose. You know, there's something that uh, Professor Ben Ayade said yesterday or some about two days back. He said, as a governor, you don't need to do anything when you get into government because your works don't speak for you. All you need to do is just sit down, amass wealth, amass wealth, amass wealth, amass wealth, and when you want to go for a re-election, re distribute the money because nobody talks about performance. That statement is one statement that we, the organized private sector, should look at. We, the nationalists, should look at. We, the patriots, should look at. It's a sad truth. It's a sad truth. That is why I'm happy that we have a window of at least six months of campaign. And I want to believe that we will get that, that support from Nigerians to be able to talk, to be able to engage. They'll be able to say, so that they'll say, Nyaito said this, what are you saying? So I, I think that we need to come to a, a stage where we understand what is going on. If we cannot provide security, and then these people come and provide you security, they become the alternate government that is believed. If we cannot give you jobs to do, and this will come and from the stupendous wealth they've they've gotten from, from killing others, they are able to give you means of livelihood. The first law addresses survival. So you're going to see that it's like young people in, in, in Akwai, when we talk of cults and no cults and things like that, and I make it very clear, I'm not going to sit here and castigate the young people that are into the cult, because I know why they're getting there in the first place. That's where they find friendship. That's where they find accommodation. That's where they, nobody wants to be in the bush. Give them decent jobs. They would rather be normal human beings. Nobody wants to be a, a cultist. No right-thinking person. But that's where they're finding love. That's where they're finding accommodation. So instead of castigating them, calling them all sorts of names, let them address their problems, and they will willingly come out. But don't tell them they are responsible, they are lazy youth, they are... It's not true. They are human beings who just feel I need to, I need to survive. Okay, it might not be. I mean, I will not endorse what they are doing, but I will have to provide an alternative for them, and then they will willingly come out and become normal. Nobody oh, yeah. wants to be a cultist. Nobody wants to be in the in the in the in the in the, in the forest. Nobody wants to be carrying guns and, and chewing things that you know will endanger your life tomorrow. Give them a means of livelihood, and they will tell you that they are human beings. Okay. All right. Interesting. Uh, thank you so much for your time, uh, Ezekiel Yaituk. Um, and of course, uh, we hope to have you. Robin Hood. Again. Robin Hood. Yes, I Robin Hood. I, 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 mentioned, Robin. I mentioned that. Yes, indeed. I mentioned it. It's understandable in this period of politics in your you know, uh, law space taking up. I wish you all the best. Thanks so much, sir. All right. All right. And that's the size of, of the press for today. Uh, we'll be back in a jiffy uh, with a first major conversation, but let's take a look at what happened today in history.